What's up, everybody? Welcome back to my channel. If you are new, hey, I'm Sydney. Every single Thursday, I will now be sitting down talking about true crime, cults, and conspiracies. So, I just want to start off by saying thanks to everybody who has been subscribed so far. Most of you had subscribed due to my True Crime Thursday playlist, where every single Thursday I sit down and talk about the craziest true crime, and every single day the ones that are going to be the most. That is still going to continue, and I still enjoy true crime, don't get me wrong. But for a while, if you haven't seen my last video, I go more in depth about it. But for a while, I've been really wanting to add in cults and conspiracies, because I'm a huge fan of the paranormal and supernatural so i still will be posting on thursdays that is my favorite day of the week don't ask me why couldn't tell you everybody knows that i post on thursdays so why not continue that and then also i'm just gonna tie in cults and conspiracies along with my true crime so this is crimes cults and conspiracies with me sydney Okay, so yeah, like I said, I will be consecutively posting. So one Thursday I will post cults, one Thursday I will post conspiracies, you get the gist. For true crime, I still will be posting for true crime Thursdays, basically where I will still be continuing the states. So I still have research done for that, I have videos that I have done for that. So that's still going to be a thing. Whenever I'm done with that, then we'll just continue with true crimes that stuck out to me the most in general. As you can see by the title of this video, today is going to start off with cults. Wow. Oh, I bought a microphone. Hey, bought a microphone. I'm officially a YouTuber because I now have a microphone. <laughs> Never would I have ever thought that I would buy a microphone. This is just a starter at microphone for anybody that's interested. As you can see by the title of this video, today is the cult of the Order of the Solar Temple. All right, here we go. Okay. This cult is probably one of the most interesting in my opinion because not only is it like, like the whole time you're kind of like, what the, it, it was just a different time period where people didn't really understand that they were a part of a cult. They just believed they were in a, an organization, a community, you know, different um, time period. You can't judge them. I can only judge you now. If you know that you are a part of something where these people are making you believe what they believe in or making you have sex with them because Jesus told them to. Sweetie, sweetie, you're in a cult. You are in a cult. As I said in my last video, I wanted to be more entertaining, so my cults and conspiracy videos will be a little more laid back. It's going to be a little bit more laid back. It's going to be a little bit more about me telling the story. I wanted to be more entertaining because I want not only for y'all to like my videos, but for y'all to like me. So, <laughs> okay. Small disclaimer before I do get into the video. Sorry, there's a piece of dust. Small disclaimer before I get into the video, it does have a brief mention of suicide. And as always, these videos are very dark, so if you are not in a good place right now, please be kind to yourself and to others. For the people that are still here, let's get started. The Order of the Solar Temple was founded by two men, Luc Jaure and Joseph de Mambro, in 1984 in Geneva, Switzerland. This cult based its ideas and beliefs off of another cult that is dated back all the way into the year 1118, which is in the 12th century, and they are called the Knights of Templar Order. The Pope at the time had actually suppressed this group in the year 1302, but they reformed and rebranded in the year 1805. Bernard Raymond Favre Palapra, if I'm butchering that, please, I'm so sorry, I have listened to five, five different pronunciations of this name. He believed that he needed to restart this group and reinstate it, and it actually did gain a lot of popularity and success really quickly. Bernard did run this group for a little over 30 years until his death in 1838, and his death actually ended up causing the cult to split into multiple different factions. The reason being for the split is because a lot of people believed that their way of worshipping and their beliefs were the only true and correct way, which if you haven't already guessed it, it does remind me a little bit of Christianity. And you know how in Christianity there's like Baptist and Methodist and Catholic and a whole bunch of other things. They believe that even though their sole purpose and beliefs are focused on Christianity and the Bible as a whole, they have different ways of going about it. So that is kind of how I took it as. So, survival of the fittest started coming into play, and obviously the weaker factions started to weed themselves out whenever it started to lose followers and lose worshippers and believers, 
And the stronger factions obviously did survive, and they started getting more popularity and a lot more people. And, of course, one of these factions ended up leading to the Order of the Solar Temple, founded by Luc Jaure and Joseph de Miembro. Wow, full circle. That was a heart. That's still a heart. Circle. All right, so since we are talking about two different people, let's go ahead and start off with Luc Jaure and a little bit of his background. Luc Jaure was born on the 18th of October, 1947, making him a Libra. He was born in Kikwit, Belgian Congo, but then he relocated with his parents in Belgium in the 1950s. Luke attended Free University of Brussels and did end up graduating with his medical degree, but only two years later he did join the Belgian army. After Luke left the army, he began studying homeopathy and became a homeopathic physician and he traveled throughout the 1970s preaching about alternative medicine and became overly interested in the paranormal. He spent time in the Philippines learning about psychic healing, and he even traveled to China, Peru, and India as well. Luke wanted to kind of settle down and stop traveling for a little bit, so he ended up courting and marrying a lady named Christine. Now, they did have a good marriage at first, and within their first year of marriage, they had a baby together, but tragically lost the baby really, really early after it was born, and that caused a pretty tough strain on their marriage, and they ended up divorcing because of it. It was just too much for the couple to handle. Luke had, in his years of traveling and teaching people about alternative medicine, and he gained a pretty loyal following, and everybody really wanted to know what he was going to do next or what he was going to teach them next. A lot of people wanted to hear from Luke, and they trusted what he was saying. Luke attended regularly and eventually joined the Golden Way Foundation in Geneva, Switzerland, and had started to even hold his own conferences. He had quickly became one of the most popular and regular speakers during these conferences. And of course, at one of these conferences, he ended up meeting, you guessed it, the other co-founder, Joseph DiMambro. Now, before I get into their very weird friendship that they had, or acquaintance, type of thing. Let's talk about Joseph and his background. Joseph DiMambro was born on the 19th of August, 1924, making him a Leo, and he was born in South France to Raphael and Fernande DiMambro. Joseph attended a private Catholic school whenever he was young, and he was known to be a very smart student and well above the average student in his grade. When Joseph was 16, World War II had actually broken out, which caused him to not be able to attend school full-time, and he ended up having to get a job. He finally found a job being a jeweler and then ended up learning how to make clocks at this job as well. In 1944, Joseph had met a lady named Nanine, and they ended up getting married and having a son together named Bernard. Bernard ended up being a successful French actor, and of course his parents were really proud and supportive of him, but that's Really all I know about Bernard, I didn't really say anything more about that child, but yeah. Also, I didn't really read if Joseph and this wife had gotten a divorce or separated or if she even joined the cult. I couldn't find anything about that, but I have a feeling with later on in the story, which we'll get to in a second. I'm so sorry. I'm kind of jumping forward. I have a feeling that they got divorced with what he does, but well, <laughs> sorry to tease ya. Foreshadow. We'll see. Let's keep going. In 1956, Joseph joined the Ancient and Mystical Order of the Rose Crucis. This cult was popular during and following the years of World War II, and Joseph had become the head of this faction in Nîmes, France until 1969. During this time, Joseph was still working as a jeweler and still making clocks, but he eventually quit this job whenever he had gained a new interest in a new cult called the New Age Movement. He was a full-time speaker for this cult, and because of this, he kind of started wanting to form a cult of his own, and he did that in 1973. Joseph had named this cult Center for the Preparation, and it did focus and identify a lot of the New Age movement beliefs. He only spent three years forming and running this cult, and this cult had a lot of weird ceremonies. It happened to focus on esotericism. Esotericism refers to a number of traditions, philosophies, and practices 
that focus inwards on human beliefs, spirituality, and well-being. This cult particularly believed that the world was changing and there was going to be a new age or a new movement. And as long as... I'm sorry. As long as they obeyed the laws, that they were going to be the ones to enter this new age and new life first. This group resided in a small community in Animus, France, and Joseph would make the people during ceremonies basically prepare their bodies for this new age. Joseph was very well known in this community because he did have two separate factions for the Order of the Preparation Cult. One was in Animus, France, and the other one was in Geneva. Joseph would travel and regularly speak at both, and he was starting to gain a pretty hefty following, and he was diving deeper and deeper into these beliefs, and it was just kind of starting to progress a lot more than what he thought it was going to. Joseph started to present himself as a part of the Great White Brotherhood. Now, the name is very misleading. Um, it has nothing to do with race. It has everything to do with the 12 masters of the Great White Brotherhood had a very bright, angelic white aura. <laughs> It's not funny. These masters would claim to be, if I was reading correctly, reincarnations of very famous historical figures like Moses in the biblical times or an Egyptian pharaoh. Back to Luke for a second. In 1981, he was a part of the renewed order of the temple and he had gotten up to be one of the higher ups called a grand master. But due to policy disputes, he ended up leaving that cult because he just couldn't agree with some of the things that they were doing and also he had a very big ego and didn't like when people were bossing him around. Luke and Joseph at this point were acquaintances due to them meeting at certain conferences. They kind of got to talking and due to their mutual beliefs and ideas they wanted to combine all of their beliefs and ideas and their energies to form their own organization aka a cult. Joseph is the one who had persuaded Luke into doing this, and Luke was very hesitant at first because he had just left the renewed order of the temple due to him not being able to agree with some of their policies. And so it was going to be new for him to kind of work with somebody else on their own type of thing because they were both very high up in their own cults. So for them to form their own and work together as high ups was just not something Luke wanted to do, but he eventually did give in, of course, or we wouldn't be talking about what I am talking about today. In Geneva, Switzerland, 1984, Luke Jure and Joseph de Mambro founded the Order of the Solar Temple. Cult, not an organization. Cult, this group was very picky about who could join and they did focus a lot of their beliefs around the Knights of the Templar Order, like I had stated earlier. Since they did form a lot of their beliefs and opinions around this group that was dated back so early, they believed they were heirs to it. So the Knights of Templar did wear these big white robes that had a red cross on the front along on their shields. So Luke and Joseph basically clicked copy and paste, and they did that for the Order of the Solar Temple. They basically wore the exact same thing. So the selection process um, for this, obviously, like I had said, was you were very, they were very picky about who they would let join this cult. And the main thing that would boost you up a little bit is if you had a lot of money. Luke and Joseph wanted a lot of money. They wanted a lot of donations. They said money. In summary, basically they wanted a lot of donations so that they could kind of grow and build different factions and lodging for their chosen ones. So the two founders had a different way of going about them being the higher ups or like the founders. Luke focused a lot on traveling and recruitment because he was a very good master manipulator. He did a lot of love bombing, which don't even get me started on love bombing. He would basically recruit all of the people into the cults for the interview process. He would target the middle to upper class specifically due to money. Joseph focused a lot more on the rituals and ceremonies, and he also dealt with the financial aspect behind the cult too. So the beliefs of the Order Temple was kind of all over the place because they had mixed their 
new age or golden way ideology along with elements of Christianity and astrology. The cult focused on three ideologies in particular, one being to correct the ideas that are associated with power and authority. Number two was awaiting the merging of all Islam and Christian cults. And number three was <laughs> waiting for Jesus to come back as the solar king. It wasn't like I had said Christian ideologies, because there is a second coming of Christ, but he's coming back as Jesus Christ, not a solar king. But that's what they believed, was a solar king. Because, here we go, there's always the one thing that cults have that just worries me. Just somebody just makes up some dumb shit about how you're going to have your second life. So here we go. Okay, so when Luke would preach and how he had gained this following so far was that he would tell his followers that he was the third reincarnation of Jesus Christ himself. So that way he could get more people because he's Jesus Christ. He had also convinced his followers that he was one of the grand masters of the cult dated all the way back to the Knights of Templar. And last but certainly not least, he would preach that there were these things called death voyages. You would leave behind your earthly body on earth and your soul would hop on these death voyages to the star called Sirius. He told these people that the only way that you could transition to the star Sirius is if you transition through fire. So Luke did explain that he was Jesus Christ to these people. He would <laughs> make up basically saying that in order for him to connect closer to God right before the ceremonies, the women in this cult had to engage with him sexually and that would help him connect closer to God since, you know, he is Jesus and he wanted the lesson to be great for the day. Like, what? How did people believe that? Joseph also had engaged sexually with a bunch of women and he ended up falling pregnant with one of his little ladies. So since they ended up falling pregnant and they named their daughter Emmanuel, Joseph believed that his daughter was a gift and a cosmic being. She was immaculate. She was the chosen one. She was going to be one of the highest people in the cult. But he told people that she was conceived the way that Mary had conceived Jesus. You know, Mary was a virgin in the Christian biblical times. Mary was a virgin and fell pregnant. Yeah, it was just kind of, it was rough. And that's how he would tell people that he had conceived, or Dominique had conceived Emmanuel. He didn't have sex with Dominique. There was no way that she got pregnant from him. This is why she was the chosen one. By the late 1980s and early 1990s, Luke and Joseph had recruited almost a thousand members of the Order of the Solar Temple, and they believed that there was too many for them to handle just by themselves, just them two, because they had different factions in Canada, Switzerland, and France. So they had come up with the headquarters of around 33 of the most trusted members in the Order of the Solar Temple. Since Joseph had believed that Emmanuel was conceived in such a immaculate way, he believed that he could continue to produce more children and engage in sexual behavior with the chosen women. So that way he could produce more like immaculate children, I guess, more of the chosen beings, which is just another way of saying, I want to have sex with you. So at this time, it had been a few years, Luke was still traveling, recruiting people, um, still preaching and everything, and then Joseph was still inside of the community of the cult, still planning the ceremonies and doing the rituals and stuff. They still had interacted with each other at some points within these years, but most of the time they didn't really know what each other were doing, and they never really talked about how they were going to further the cult and what direction they were heading in so of course that can lead to destruction because like i said earlier they were both kind of hesitant about adding all of their stuff together it's mainly luke but you know both founders did want that higher energy and a lot of their followers found themselves at a standoff because they didn't really know who to follow and 
who to believe and who to side with. And they also started to realize that they weren't really furthering themselves and it just started to get kind of boring. And all of the stuff that they had been told was not happening. So what's going on? There were ceremonies that just involved normal preachings and ceremonies that were filmed for initiation. In a lot of these ceremonies, they would basically preach on how to keep the higher ups happy, aka the solar king, also Jesus Christ. Luke and Joseph would continuously and regularly ask for money and more donations and most of this money would go to lodging for the management or the founders. Like you didn't just get to live lavishly if you weren't doing anything. So you had to continuously help Joseph plan rituals or you had to recruit members. So Emmanuel started to question her parents' beliefs and started to challenge exactly what they were saying. She didn't really believe what she had grown up in all of her life. She had eventually exposed some of the illusions that Joseph would use during demonstrations in the ceremonies. And a lot of the members were loved bombed by Luke during initiation by being told that they were light beings who were reincarnated for specific missions on Earth. But at that time, it had almost been a decade um, from the other members who were initiated. So they started to question when their special missions were coming. They were starting to go super impatient. So in the early 1990s is when things started to completely crumble within the organization. In 1991, one of the higher-ups had actually filed a lawsuit against the group and Luke had just been arrested in Canada for purchasing illegal firearms, which the authorities had believed that this could be cause for destruction of whatever he was planning. Like, why were you purchasing so many illegal firearms? In 1992, a large percentage of the cult had started to really question the beliefs and a lot of people started leaving. Joseph had actually been diagnosed with cancer and had been hiding this from the group for months. So not only was he deteriorating, but the cult was deteriorating itself. Since a lot of followers were leaving at this point, a lot of money and donations were leaving too, and Joseph and Luke were not having that. They did not appreciate that at all. They knew that if they did not come up with a plan really quickly, they were going to lose absolutely everything. So this is when they made up the transition plan. However, before the transition into this new world, a lot of the former cult members had started to expose a lot of things that had happened inside the cult itself. The Dutois family was one of the main targets because one of the higher up former members and his wife had a baby that was a son who they named Emmanuel, which was way too close to Emmanuel. I know. Spelled different though. They had actually fallen pregnant while still remaining in the cult and Joseph had tried to break them up and had said there was no way that they were going to have this baby and actually banned them from having this baby. So that was not the main reason why they left, but just kind of like the icing on the cake. Joseph and Luke had recruited Tony Dutois and his job was to mount devices within the sanctuary that would project illusions to trick the followers. Tony, before he left, had revealed to the present cult members and former cult members of what his job duty was and of course, understandably, the members were outraged. This manipulation that was caused by Luke and Joseph caused a lot of members who, when they found this out, what Tony would do, they left. Of course, they would leave. And this really pissed off Luke and Joseph. I'm not sure how they found out. It didn't really say exactly how they learned that Tony had spread, you know, this news. But they got pissed. Joseph had told members of the cult that Tony's new infant son, Emmanuel, was the Antichrist. In Quebec, Canada, October of 1994, Joseph had gave orders to two cult members to execute a ritual killing of the Dutois family. They were ordered to kill the entire family, which included Tony, his wife Nikki, and their infant son, Emmanuel. Tony was stabbed to death 50 times, Nikki was repeatedly stabbed 8 times, and the infant son, Emmanuel, was stabbed 6 times. Joseph had told the people that the only way to kill the Antichrist was through a wooden stake right into the heart. However, this was the start of the transition. 
Only four days later, the apartment that the family had resided in was set on fire. When the firemen and police arrived, the bodies were so badly burned, along with little remains of the apartment. Only 12 hours later, the sanction in Switzerland was reported to be on fire as well. The mirror walls and the red curtains had surrounded 22 corpses that were formed in a shape of what looked like to be a sun. Of those corpses were 9 men, 12 women, and one 12-year-old boy. Each corpse that was in the form of this sun was found in those white robes with the red cross on them. 19 of those bodies were fatally shot in the head, while the remaining bodies were found with a plastic bag tied around their head. While at this Switzerland sanctuary, another sanction in Salvin of the Order of the Solar Temple had caught on fire. 25 corpses were found to have all died from a large drug overdose, suggesting that they were poisoned, along with being shot in the head as well. Five of those 25 bodies happened to be Luke Jure, Joseph de Mambro, and the cosmic immaculate child, Emmanuel. While the authorities were searching the property for answers as to what is going on, they found a bone-chilling tape between Luke and Joseph. The conversation is as follows. Joseph, people have beaten us to the punch, you know. Luke, yeah, Waco beat us to the punch. Joseph, in my opinion, we should have gone six months before them. What we will do would even be more spectacular. So not only did Joseph and Luke have that really creepy conversation, but Joseph, right before all of this happened, had done a recreation of the Last Supper that was in the biblical times. Joseph was Jesus along with 12 members, the 12 disciples, and they had mimicked the version of the Last Supper. It is later concluded, after all of these bodies are found, that only 15 of them were true suicides, which meant that out of all of the total number of bodies, only 15 of them really truly believed in the transition. Canadian police believed that the two founding members, Luke and Joseph, were responsible for the Dutois family murders. But since Luke and Joseph were among the bodies found, there was really nothing that they could do because the people who were responsible were also found dead. There were remaining surviving members that had went into hiding, so a lot of people had believed that the order of the solar temple had come to an end. However, the following year, there were 16 more members that had done the same ritual, and it was because... They either weren't invited to the initial ceremony or they were gone at the time. Those 16 members of the Order of the Solar Temple had created their own ritual in Grenoble, France. Each member, who was just like the others, had been found with a bag tied over their head and had been fatally shot in the head, just like just like the members in the first ceremonies. Two years after that, there were five people in Canada that had the same cause of death during the spring equinox, and they were all found burned alive. When firefighters had arrived at this scene, there were three children that had ran out and explained that their families had drugged them and had begged for them to commit suicide along with them. This brought the grand total of the Order of the Solar Temple's mass murder-suicide to 74, 11 of them being children. It is alleged that the Order of the Solar Temple still has remaining members or members who believe in the same beliefs as them and have created their own type of cult, but like I said, that is alleged. There are still members alive, maybe, and are awaiting their own time for the next transition, so it is possible that the cult still has active members to this day, but there are no reported mass suicides, murders, or anything of that nature yet. So, um, could you imagine being a police officer or a fireman and walking into the scene of people in the same outfit, walking into a scene where there's red curtains everywhere and all these people are in the same dressed robes and they're all in the form of a sun? So, due to the nature of how many people they manipulated this has got to be one of the creepiest cults ever and i'm not just saying that but it's so bizarre to me i know like i said earlier that this was in a different time but could you imagine that happening today like i feel like that was normal in that time like waco had happened 
And at that point, like, the Charles Manson family had happened too. If you consider that a cult. I do. But, ew. (laughs) (laughs) It's not funny. It's really sad. That's a lot of people. That's so many people. That's so gross. It's so weird. Cults are so interesting to me. Thank you guys so much for watching my first installment of Crimes, Cults, and Conspiracies. Like I said, obviously today was cult, and next week might be a crime, might be a conspiracy. You just gotta stay tuned to find out. Um, as always, um, make sure to hit the subscribe button if you enjoyed my channel. Like, subscribe, and tell your friends. I guess that's it for me today, guys. So I am gonna dip out, and I will see you guys next Thursday. Bye!